Zero power is going to be one. Now you have one exception, and that is this guy right here. Try putting that in your calculator, and it's going to give you a duh. I don't know because there is no mathematical meaning for zero to the zero power. That's your one exception. But get this for your test. If you see this statement, any real number to the zero power is one, you're gonna enter that as true. We're gonna realize that there's an exception but we're going to talk about real numbers to the zero power as being one. All right, so that's pretty easy. If I have any real number to the zero power, it's gonna be one. Which brings me to some specific problems and applications of these concepts. And don't forget what you uh, just learned from the last concept as you move to the new one. Watch this guy. If you were asked to evaluate that, you go, well, it's something to the zero power, right? It must be one. Yeah, but here's the question. What's to the zero power? Again, the question, what's the base? This means x is only to the zero power then multiplied by four. This means four times x to the zero power. x to the zero power is one, that gives me four. Please notice the difference between that and this. What's that gonna be? Yeah, it's gonna be one, because it's any real number to the zero power going to be one. Change the base, you change the evaluation. Here's one from your Hawks. You can do this a couple of different ways. You can say, well, five to the zero power is one, and five squared is 25. One times 25 is 25. That's one way to do it. Or you could uh, apply the uh, first property of exponents and go, hey, I got the same base here. I think I will add my exponents. And five squared is just 25. Either way, you're gonna get 25. Let me try one more. And then we'll look at negative integer exponents. work in this guy, you could multiply this outer exponent by the inner exponents if you wanted to, or you could simply say, hey, anything to the zero power is just going to be one. So this means three times one, this means three. Zero as an exponent. All right. Let's get to the more challenging aspects of exponents, namely negative exponents and fractional exponents. We'll do negative exponents in this lecture and uh, fractional exponents all by themselves in the next lecture. So here we go. Negative exponents, something like 2 to the negative 3 power. Now I recall when I first saw a negative exponent, I thought, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I'll bet you it's going to be a negative number. Turned out not to be the case. In fact, the negative exponent has more an idea of a reciprocal. Here's a, here's a way you can think of it. If I have something to a negative power, I can move it to the other part of the fraction and change the sign of my exponent. How do you move it to the other part of the fraction if you don't have a fraction? Well, you actually always have a fraction, don't you? So if I have a factor to a negative power, I can move it to the 
other part of the fraction if I change the sign of my exponent. So 2 to the negative 3 over 1 becomes 1 over 2 to the positive 3. Now one thing you're going to find out that Hawks and your test say is express your final answers without any negative exponents. So if you see a negative exponent, you're never through. You have something else to do. Hey, 2 to the negative 3 is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 3. And I can evaluate 2 to the positive 3. That's just a positive as your exponent. It means 2 times 2 times 2. That's 1 over 2. So check it out. 2 to the negative 3 is not a negative number. In fact, it turns out to be a fraction. But here's the idea. I'm going to write it out. I'm free to move a factor to the other part of the fraction now remember there's always a fraction if you don't have a fraction make one I'm free to move a factor to the other part of the fraction if this is an important if I change the sign of the exponent That's a concept you can use multiple times when you are evaluating um, expressions that have negative exponents. some expressions like now you're going to be asked you're going to be given something like this and asked to simplify it and the question of course is why is it not simplified that's why it's not simplified because it has a negative exponent as long as you have a negative exponent you have work to do right Think of this as a fraction, or actually make a fraction. And I'm free to move a factor to the other part of the fraction if I change the sign of the exponent. Do I move the whole thing to the other part? No. The only thing that is to the negative power is the B. A is well behaved. B is the problem child. So I move B to the negative 2 to the other part of the fraction and change the sign of my exponent. A stays in the numerator, B squared in the denominator. Simplified. Why is it simplified? Positive exponents. All right, check out another one. And these are examples from your 7R2 talks. Let's look at some of these guys. They, all, they each involve a negative exponent and or one of the three properties of exponents. Whenever I would highly suggest, whenever you have a power to a power, go ahead and multiply your exponent. Just go ahead and take care of it first. I have a power to a power. I'm going to go ahead and multiply my outer exponent by my inner exponent. That's a 6. Negative 3 times 3. Negative 5. Don't stop. I still have a negative exponent. Think of it as a fraction. Factor the negative exponent moves 6 over y to the ninth. Try another. 